Praise God. Praising God for this beautiful day and also for the opportunity to worship his holy name. And uh, thank you, worship teams, both Malayalam and English, uh, for helping us to and also leading us to uh, singing the praises of the Lord. And um, let us continue prayerfully in the presence of God um, as we have a few minutes before us to meditate from the word of God. I just want to go ahead with uh, the series that I began some time back uh, on missing the most important at not knowing it or recognizing it, missing the most important at not recognizing it. We are entering into the third part of that uh, topic and um, the first two were, I hope all of us remember, the first one was missing the word of God for such a long time in the history of Israelites, uh, almost for 75 long years that they missed the word of God. And uh, the worship was still going on, every other activity was still taking place, but without recognizing that they had lost the Bible or the scripture, the word of God from among them. And then finally they found it and they just confessed their sins before the Lord. They had a reading of the word of God and they make confessions, they pledge uh, changes in their lives and, you know, to adhere to the word of God and all, and how the word of God changed everything in the land of Israel, and the importance of we also holding on to the word of God without losing the word of God for our very dear life. This is what is given into our hands, and we need to really cling on to the word of God, always, 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 without ever missing it. You know, the word of God is the spiritual food for us, right? And I hope all of us are following the Bible reading plan. How many of us are really following the Bible reading plan? Don't raise your hands. I hope I'll be able to see all the hands lifted up on 31st when I ask at the end. There will be a special uh, gift, a, a token gift for those who would say that, yes, I completed reading the Bible one time this year in 2022. Just I'm trying to allure you uh, you know, to, uh, you know, make an appeal to you again about the importance of reading of God's word. Amen? amen. That amen was very weak. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. So if you have to catch up, please make sure that you catch up and then make sure that we read and complete uh, the Bible because that is going to help us a lot, change us a lot. Second thing that we have seen we had spent time on was about Jesus himself, the parents of Jesus, while they all went to the temple in Jerusalem to worship the Lord for the feast of Passover, and uh, Jesus stayed back in the temple, and the parents did not know at all, and they, uh, they went back to Galilee, to their own hometown, and only by the end of the day, they come to know that Jesus was not with them. How old was Jesus then? 12 years old. He was not even a bar mitzvah. That means, you know, he was not someone by the name bar mitzvah. He is a person who would be able to take his own responsibility. Means only by the age of 13 a person becomes bar mitzvah. But Jesus was not even 13. He was only 12. So the parents' responsibility was that they should have taken care of Jesus and brought him with them, but they forgot all about him. And uh, Joseph must have thought that jo Jesus was with the women and children in the front, with Mary in the front, and uh, uh, Mary must have thought that Jesus was with Joseph in the back. And uh, uh, by the end of the day, when they were about to come for the day, for the night, they recognized that Jesus was not with them. They went back, one more day's journey, back to Jerusalem, and one full day of search, they were still not finding Jesus. And after three days, they are finding Jesus right in the temple, talking to the people about God's word. And that's where they find him. And when they scolded Jesus, he's saying, why did you do this to me, uh, this to us? When Mary was asking, Jesus is uh, responding by saying, don't you know that I'm supposed to be in the place uh, where uh, you know, in, in my father's 
place. They did not recognize that and many a times we also don't recognize that we, Jesus is no more working with us. Jesus is not holding our hands. Jesus is not talking to us. We truly, truly miss Jesus, but don't recognize. We take it for granted that Jesus is with us. And then we kind of travel like that, going on without knowing that we are missing Jesus. Today, I'm uh, going to the next part of that, the third part of that, and missing something very, very important, most important, but not knowing it, how we lost the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I hope you will give me a patient hearing and will be prayerfully listening to me, uh, you know, all through the message. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, we read, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. What do we do? Apostle Paul is talking about people to, in his letter to Timothy, Apostle Paul is saying that some people, many people, hold on to a form of godliness at, although they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. Holding on to a form of godliness. We know very well how to do this. Holding on to a form of godliness. We have a form of godliness at denying its power. Not experiencing the power that is attached to that. That's what I wanted to talk about. Second thing. Second verse that I just wanted to point uh, before you is from Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Apostle Paul is asking the Galatian Christians, are you so foolish? The chapter actually begins by saying, oh you foolish Galatians, what a wonderful certificate, right? What a great award Apostle Paul is giving to the Galatian Christians and he is telling, oh you foolish Christians, if suppose if the Holy Spirit says to us, suppose if the pastor says that to the Lakeland Church, right? What will be the response? My God, I'll be fired the next day. But Apostle Paul is right away, he, he is addressing the Galatian Christians and saying, you are you foolish Christians. Who has bewitched your eyes? When Jesus has been already portrayed before you crucified, you know, the meaning is that only through Jesus you can be saved. It is so vivid, so clear. It is already portrayed before you. But who has bewitched your eyes? And then in verse 3, Apostle Paul is saying, are you so foolish? Again, he's saying, are you so, are you not foolish? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Atma will arm bitch. Jadatil Ahno Ipaning. I think we need to really question ourselves as we look at these passages, right? One more passage and then I will go ahead. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, where we read, and do not get drunk with wine. We have no problem with that. At least some of us. I didn't mean anything. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Just want to make use of these three passages to bring this very important message that I am, this part that I'm beginning today, I might have to take a few Sundays to explain it well and preach it to you. So please, take it as something very, very serious. We, every one of us, needs to consider this and uh, appropriate it, you know, apply it in our lives, in our personal lives. There was a man by name Francis of Assisi. 
a very devout kind of Christian, a believer. And a story is told about him that he, one day the devout Francis of Assisi, he walked into the palace of Pope Innocent. Pope Innocent. And uh, so the Pope was trying to show the decorative riches of his palace and the room where the Pope was seated and Pope said to Francis of Assisi, we do not have to say any more silver and gold have I none. We have everything. Look at my palace where I reside. We don't have to say any more silver and gold have I none. We have everything. Now, Francis of Assisi replied to that, nor can we say any more. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. So very true, right? So very true. We have lost the power somewhere on the way. I know that I'm preaching to Pentecostals. I know that I'm preaching in a Pentecostal church. We were called the people of Holy Spirit, right? We were people who used to take so much pride in calling ourselves or being called as people of the Holy Spirit. But we now, sadly speaking, unfortunately only a form of godliness to a great extent. Only a form of godliness. We have denied the power that is attached to it. We have lost the power somewhere and we need to really be concerned about it. There was a man of God by name William Booth who, lived, who was a, an English preacher who lived in England from 19, 1829 to 1912. Wonderful man of God. He was the one who founded the Salvation Army. He told that the chief danger of the coming century would be the chief danger of this century would be religion without the Holy Spirit. Religion without the Holy Spirit. Christianity without Christ. Forgiveness without repentance. Salvation without regeneration. Politics without God. And heaven without hell. This is what we actually display before the world. We display our religion but no Holy Spirit. We portray Christianity but no Christ there. We offer forgiveness without repentance. We offer salvation without any regeneration. We offer politics without God. And we offer heaven without talking about hell. The chief danger of Christianity in this century. As I told you, as I read to you from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. We have a form of godliness, although we have denied its power. So Apostle Paul was actually talking to people, talking about people who had the forms, who had the rituals, who had the external appearance of being godly. We also have those, right? We have the external appearances, we have the observances, we have the rituals, we come into the service, we sing songs, we praise God, we preach, we hear, we offer prayers, we do so many things and we have the appearance of being godly. But there is no power manifested. It's not your fault, it's our fault. It's our fault. We are all guilty in this. We haven't been concerned about it. We haven't been crying out to the Lord. We haven't prostrated before the Lord, crying out to him and saying, Lord, this is what we came out for. We have somewhere lost the power attached to it. That's why Apostle Paul said, having begun in the spirit, you have begun in the spirit, but are you ending up in flesh, by the flesh? Ending by the flesh. The methods that we use are all off by the flesh, not of the spirit. The weapons of the flesh 
Paul is saying you began in the spirit. Now you are perfecting. You are ending in the flesh. Are we doing that? What is the meaning of the word foolish here? When Apostle Paul talks about that to the Galatian Christians, it's not, it doesn't mean stupid people. That's not what Apostle Paul meant. The meaning is actually uh, a perception or a lack of faith, lack of proper understanding. That's what Apostle Paul meant when he wrote that. Not that the Galatian Christians were stupid people or people of no sense at all. No, that's not what he meant. What he meant to us that they were people who had no faith at all, who, had the, who did not have the proper perception about Christian life, you know. They did not anymore think that it is all by faith through the grace of God that they have salvation. They were told or they started believing, they started propagating, saying that if you want to be a Christian, you first become a Jew, you undergo the rite of circumcision, you keep yourself to the observance of Mosaic law, and then you can be a Christian. Manusilayo. Galatirula Christians varayan thodangi. Christiani Aganongi, Ali Avre Padipikan Tonangi, Chelere, Nuranyu, and Avre Dedel Kerry Avre Padipikan. Some people infiltrated among them, started teaching them, saying that if you want to be a Christian, this is what you have to do. These are the things that you have to do. Nullifying the cross. That's why Apostle Paul said, Who has bewitched your eyes? Jesus himself is portrayed before you on the cross. That salvation is only through Jesus. Salvation is only through the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Not by any word that we do. God's word very plainly, very evidently says it to us that it is by the grace of God that we have salvation by faith. And uh, when we apply this passage to our condition, condition of the Pentecostals today, this is precisely, precisely where there is so little life-changing power in our churches. Because the power of the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is lacking in the churches. And we need to be concerned about it. We need to start praying and crying out to the Lord. We have all other forms. We have rituals. We have observances. We have activities. We have plenty of activities. We have outreaches. We have ministerial uh, you know, opportunities. We have ministries among our own people. But then we lack the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many of us are concerned about it. Hallelujah. We have become like the Galatian Christians. You know, we Pentecostals also have become like the Galatian Christians or the Christians that Paul is referring to in Timothy. To a great extent, we began with great thirst for the Holy Spirit. I remember the days when I came out for the Lord from an Orthodox family all alone. I was only 13 plus years and in the school just entered into the ninth grade and I came out for the Lord and I remember how much I aspired, how much I desired for being filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, accepting the Lord him, itself was the work of the Holy Spirit. I knew the Holy Spirit was in me, but they had different experience. I'll talk about it later. But that experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit started crying out during the nights. That was the cry of my heart and I would cry and pray to the Lord, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to worship you being full of the Holy Spirit. And after six months of prayer, waiting on the Lord, the Lord filled me with his Holy Spirit. I did not know what I was doing. I started speaking in other tongues. I moved from one corner of the room to the other corner without my knowing. I started shaking. I started worshiping the Lord. I started speaking a language which I never spoke until then. That was such a wonderful, magnificent experience and I still remember that. Hallelujah! We were known as people who speak in tongues, who prophesy, who see visions, 
who interpret the messages, who use to have revelations, healings, exorcism, and direct manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Do we have any of those these days? I'm saying this, I'm sharing this, so that we will all be disturbed. My intention is to disturb you about not having this experience. The name Pentecostal itself meant that we are people having the experience and power of the Holy Spirit as on the day of Pentecost. People who not only have the indwelling Spirit, Holy Spirit, but also those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. I really believe that there is an existential relevance for Pentecost today. Is Pentecost relevant today? Hello? Is Pentecostal experience relevant today? Half-hearted? Is it relevant? Amen. You know, Pentecost is not something that happened once in history. Sometime in history. And then it is no more relevant. Pentecost is something that keeps happening, that, keeps, that should keep happening. It also has existential relevance, or in other words, keeps repeating, should be repeated, maybe in different ways than on that day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down in a very new way. It might be different, but it keeps repeated, keep repeated. Holy Spirit comes to us. Holy Spirit did not merely come for the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came to abide and fulfill the purpose of God in this world. If you just go back to the word of God, do we ever think that Holy Spirit's ministry was found or is found only in the New Testament? Only in the New Testament, no? Right from the beginning, right from the first chapter of the Bible, uh, you know, from the book of Genesis itself, you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit in verse 2 itself, in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, sorry, chapter 1, verse 2, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, earth became void and formless, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering or moving over the surface of the waters, Right from the beginning of the Bible, we see the ministry, the work, the activity, the involvement of the Holy Spirit of God, and it continues all through the Old Testament, comes to the New Testament, and even in the book of Revelation, even in the last chapter of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17, we see Spirit and the Bride say, come in the, you know, in the universe and in the history of mankind, the Holy Spirit was always the presence of God in the world. So we should not be missing the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Spirit. If we are really desirous, if we are really praying, if we are really waiting on the Lord for the work of the Holy Spirit, move of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we will we will receive them. We want to challenge the children who are here, ch challenge the younger people who are here, even the older people who have never had this experience. It's such a beautiful, beautiful experience. Desire for that. Pray about it. Ask to the Lord. Cry to the Lord so that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. What's new about this Pentecost? If Holy Spirit was already there in the world, right from the beginning, from the creation, recreation uh, uh, of, of the world, what was new about the day of Pentecost. You know, something was new about the day of Pentecost, about the coming of the Holy Spirit. All through the Old Testament history, you know, um, the leading and works of the Holy Spirit is evident. He had a come and go ministry. He would come, fill his people, endue them with power. He would use them 
and then again the Holy Spirit comes later. So he had a come and go ministry. He came and filled his servants to fulfill the purpose of God, be it Gideon, be it Samson, be it David, be it Samuel. They were all filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and used by the Holy Spirit. But Pentecost, Pentecost was an unprecedented manifestation of the Holy Spirit with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. From then on, it was the Holy Spirit who empowered, who equipped the believers for the Lord's work to establish the word and to do the works of miracles. Everything was by the Holy Spirit. You go through the book of Acts and you, you know, it is said that it should rather be called the, the book of the Holy Spirit. Not the book of Acts, but the book of the Holy Spirit. Because that is what you see all through the Holy Spirit moving, Holy Spirit using, the Holy Spirit filling the people, his servants and using them mightily. It was the work of the Holy Spirit that you see in the word of God in the book of Acts especially. Right? And so, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. I have to end very quickly. So I'll only be able to begin today. There is a command given. There is a command given. Ephesians 5, 18. I read it to you. It says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not get drunk with wine. For that is dissipation. If anyone, you know, resorts to any of this, drinking of wine, drinking of alcohol, drinking of alcoholic things, you know, there should be an end to that. And uh, if you ask me, Pastor, do you need to preach that message here in our Pentecostal church? I believe that increasingly that is happening among even the so-called believers that they go back to all the social drinking begin there and then slowly they become addicted to all these alcoholic beverages and everything. And so it is very important that I preach this message here also that we should all be cautioned. Do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation. Adinal durnadapa undagumello. That is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Two usages I read about it. I was really enthused by those renderings, actually. It is written, keep on being filled. One translation says. Not simply say, saying that be filled with the Holy Spirit. It says, keep on being filled. In the what is the experience, Allah? Every day, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you have the indwelling spirit but keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Another translation says, be being filled every day. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Daily we need it. Daily filling of the Holy Spirit. Daily receiving that infilling of the Holy Spirit and operating from there. Hello. Hallelujah. I wish I could take all my time teaching this because this is so very important. When you invite Christ into your life, the Holy Spirit is there taking residence in your heart, in your life. But we are talking about a different experience than the indwelling Holy Spirit in us. We know that the Holy Spirit is the third person in the tri triunity of God. I don't usually say trinity Trinity could not be given, giving us the exact meaning of uh, the God in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, uh, Holy Spirit, first of all, is not a power. Holy Spirit has power, but Holy Spirit is not a power. Parishuddhatma on the Varindu Shakti Allah. Parishuddhatma vina Shakti und. Right? But Holy Spirit is not simply a power or a force. He has power. But Holy Spirit is the third person in the triunity of God. Triunity of God. Triune Godhead. The word Trinity more means 
more about a group or a set of three things. Trinity means a set of three things. Doesn't really convey the meaning. When we call Godhead as Trinity, Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, set of three things or triad or trine. Uh, while triunity is the fact of or state of being three in one, three in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons, but they are one. They are one. And that is the meaning that is communicated. So we see the role of the Holy Spirit in creation. We see the role of the Holy Spirit in recreation of the universe. And all through everything was done by Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God is so very important. And many, many scripture passages are there which go, goes to tell the importance of the Holy Spirit role of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament as we come to the end Jesus clearly taught the disciples about the role of the Holy Spirit with regard to the effective Christian life and also the empowerment for Christian ministry he said it is through Holy Spirit Jesus said it is good that I go if I don't go Holy Spirit the, the, the comforter will not come so Jesus said it is good that I go and send the one who would be leading you, who would be teaching you, who would be doing everything for you. Just to throw a little more light. In John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 22, it is written, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they already had the Holy Spirit in them. While at the same time, he asked the disciples to tarry for the promise of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem in chapter 1, verse 8 of the book of Acts. And he said, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Atmau ninggal mel, parisudhi atmau ninggal mel, beri mbol. Ninggal, sakti prabi cipta. Yerusalem elum, Yahudi elum, Samaria elum. Logatin dia tetolom ninggal ende sakti So many things to talk about. We all have the indwelling Holy Spirit. When we became born again, the Holy Spirit worked in us, through us, and so we became born again, and the Spirit dwells in us. But this is talking about a different experience, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then the continuous filling, being filled with the Holy Spirit, which every one of us should desire for, should pray for. I'll continue. We will, we will make prayers in the presence of God these days, and I right now want every one of you to close your eyes and bow your heads in the presence of God. I really want this church and I pray that this church will be a church that is led not by the pastor, not by the committee, not by the board, not by anybody else, but by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit led church. Holy Spirit led families. Holy Spirit led people. Atma unadatana. 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 Glory be to God. Can we all pray to the Lord? I think we all need to. Even if we have received this infilling, I'm sure many of us have lost it on the way. I don't know how many of us are practicing this or experience this being filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Forever, whatever you have to do, you have to do to fulfill the purpose of God. Hallelujah. 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 Can we all pray? Can we all raise our voices and pray to the Lord? Come upon us. Come upon us, O oh Lord. O oh Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Move among us, O oh Holy Spirit. These be days when we experience the Holy Spirit in a new way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't simply mean that we speak in tongues. 
doesn't simply mean that we have this gifting or that gifting, but every work that we do will depend on this being filled with the Holy Spirit, moving in the realm where that of the Spirit is only possible when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and every one of us should desire for that. Every one of us should pray for that. Father, we pray that you will make us desire us, O oh Lord. Even this morning, as we were learning from that parable, at the end of that parable, you promised your disciples and all of us how much, how much more God will give his Holy Spirit to all those who ask for, ask for him. Tanodi Chodi can never go by should that Marvin Etreadium, Etreadium. In the Ravila, that is what we have to ask you, oh Lord. That is what we want to ask you. Fill us with your spirit once again. Fill us with your spirit once again, oh Lord. We have become so tired of the human realms in which we were operating, we were moving. We want to be taken to that next level, different level. The where we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and will do everything by the empowerment and equipping of your Holy Spirit. Pray that you will help us. You will take us to deeper experiences where we will see visions. We will have revelations. Our children will start speaking in tongues. Our children will start having revelations and wonderful Christian experience that the word of God talks about and promises to us. We have lost it, O oh Lord. We have lost the desire for it, O oh Lord. Correct as I pray. Correct as I pray, O oh Lord, as a church. Thank you because you will do it. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.